people. So we are definitely sad to learn of Glenn Tuckett's yeah. passing, but we can't think of a better man to join us now to discuss what he means to BYU sports than Dave McCann. Dave, uh, what are your initial reactions to the news that uh, Glenn Tuckett has passed away? Well, it felt like he was going to live forever because it seemed like he did. I mean, 93 is a, an awesome life, and he had a he had a great life. And what what he was to BYU, he was as important to BYU off the field as Lavelle Edwards was on the field. It's quite the statement. And especially the BYU we know today. These were these were two pioneers, and one was the administrative, and the other was the guy who won the games. The guy who won the games gets a lot of the a lot of the pub, but Glenn got a lot too. You know, as a coach, he went to the College World Series twice with his BYU teams, and and you just take a look around campus at what has been built since he stepped foot on campus, what, back in 1959? Mm, incredible. And, uh, yeah, and he's, you know, he's a storyteller. He, he can work a room. And the story didn't have to be true. We were all bought in <laughs> uh, if, if he was telling it. And uh, just, uh, I, I, it, I just hope that um, when BYU fans think of Glenn Tuckett and Lavelle Edwards, they think of those two together as the two that really – put this place together sure. athletically. You bring up 1959. So he was born in 1927. He was 32 years old when he took over the head coaching job at BYU. And little did we know that that run was going to go from 59 until 1993. I mean, that, that 34 years. So he was, he was with BYU longer than he was old when he first took a job. That's pretty crazy. And, that is crazy. And how he finished. Last Wednesday, he was out at the ballpark at practice. Yeah visiting with Coach Mike Littlewood, who will be here in, in a few minutes. And then later that day he had a stroke and then passed away last night. But the last time he was out and about on his feet, he was standing in a baseball stadium that he helped build and a baseball program that, that he helped build. And I, I can't think of a more appropriate place uh, for him to spend his last time on his feet than, than at that stadium. He was very uh, to the point, which I enjoyed, uh, to the point where when I was a young broadcaster with BYU TV, uh, Vance Law's the coach, and something's going on in the game. I think BYU's trailing, and I, asked, hey, I said, hey, you're the former coach. What would you do right here? And he said, now, Jerem, that's not a very good question, <laughs> which I thought was so good. He, he, did, he did so much for this school, and like you talked about, Dave, his legacy is, is so long. And, and I feel like Tom Homo has, has almost stood on his shoulders to continue that, right, with the culmination of the Big 12 invite. Absolutely. It, it just all goes back to the pioneers. I mean, look at the state of Utah. It all goes back to the pioneers when they arrived and started uh, planting trees uh, in the Salt Lake Valley. And, and those, he was certainly a, a, a pioneer. And um, I, I wrote a story about um, Cy Kimball, one of BYU's big donors, last week uh, in the paper. And... And Glenn went to Cy years ago and said, Cy, I want to build a baseball stadium for my guys at BYU. I need, I need some help. And Cy donated some property, and he took that and, and took this and took that and built this fantastic facility that we spend all spring over at uh, watching BYU play. And, um, and that was just one piece. He was a coach that turned athletic director, that turned businessman. And a lot of people can't do the full three-point turn. You're a coach, now you're in charge of the other coaches, and sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, Tom's found a way to, to make that work uh, as a former football coach and athletic director, and I think he followed Glenn's model. But as you look around the country, coaches sometimes don't make good ADs because they're too busy coaching and there's the business over here. Glenn found a way to do both and, and was an example for – Athletic directors everywhere is why he's in the Athletic Director Hall of Fame. He's in like seven Hall of Fame. Yes. There are more halls that he's actually, fewer halls that he's not in than <laughs> halls that he is in. Uh, and, and, uh, and then he went to Alabama as the interim AD back in, I think I wrote down, 95, 95 96. He got BYU the 98 game with he, Alabama. He got that. And he saved Alabama. They had NCAA problems and rule violations. So what do they do? They, they call in the BYU guy to come clean it up. And he cleaned it up and did some great work there in, in a little over a year's time. And, and uh, how about that? We, Alabama's now the pristine standard bearer of all of college football. And, and our former AD had to go back there and put them back. To, they had to put Humpty Dumpty back together yeah, again. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dave McCann is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're remembering longtime BYU legend, coach, athletic director, Glenn Tuckett, who has uh, recently passed away. I just keep thinking about the limited resources that BYU athletics had 
when he was the athletic director from 1976 to 1993. They're working out of the Smithfield House, these tiny offices, and yet they continue to put this high-level product on the field. They win a national championship. They recruit in a Heisman Trophy winner. It just it's it is the story of BYU athletics and largely the story of Glenn Tuckett of. You know, we don't have much, but we're going to get the most out of it, and we're going to show the world who we are. And he, and he was that way with his players. Hey, you know, I got much here on the bench, but I've got to convince these average players to play great, these great players to play even better so we can go out and beat the best. It's that same kind of do less with more, more with less. And, um, and then as you look at BYU today, all you do is drive around campus, and you can see that, well, now BYU has everything. And uh, what was once a banner year for the Cougar Club to raise a million bucks in the early 80s is now dropped on the table by single donors. This is a different world that we're in. I think Glenn and Lavelle would have had a good time in this world because <laughs> they got practice facilities and stadiums and, and don't have to do radio call-in shows and things like that. Um, but we Both wouldn't have words. this stuff today if it, if it weren't for those two. And I know that uh, Glenn's wife, Joe, passed away a few years ago, so... Uh, trumping all of this is that great reunion of those two back together. And and uh, I imagine he had a mile of friends waiting to share stories with him when he oh my passed gosh. over last night. I would have loved to have seen the uh, Lavelle Glenn hug, right? Yeah. That that happened recently, I, I imagine. <laughs> Hopefully neither of them was surprised to see the other one. <laughs> what are you what? doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> I thought for sure you were going over there. <laughs> Uh, it's good. It's good yeah. stuff, and and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll have a moment of silence at the football game uh, this weekend, and and uh, a chance for Cougar fans to just sit and reflect for a moment on one of the great, one of the great BYU uh, contributors of his time, talents, gifts, and 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 what he left behind. I'm hoping the Y on the back of the Big South scoreboard is done. And that that thing can be lit up bright for the first time, you know, this week, and maybe that has a little. I drove more. by that this morning. It looks good. It looks great. It looks great, right? It's good. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the Washington State game from yeah. the weekend. Then Virginia, Tyler Algier, what a, what a performance! Oh my gosh, he had to be great for BYU to win this game, which we were talking about yesterday, Dave. Of there's two trains of thought here. One is why was this game so close? BYU should have rolled that team that didn't have a coach and blah blah blah. But also the Hey, Power 5 games are going to be messy sometimes. We went in there and got the win. A lot of people picked Washington State because they thought the emotion would go the other way. They are going to win one for the Gipper. Um, that wasn't the case. You were there. The, half the stadium was empty. So it wasn't like the Pullman community was all in this political fight between the coach and, and the administration. It's almost like they, they didn't care. And I think that took some wind out of the sail of Washington State. They come out of the locker room. They're going, um, we don't have a coach and we don't have a crowd. And I, I think that took some of their energy sure. away. And to your point, the stadium mandates that you either present uh, proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within 72 hours of the game. And it, for those that were in support of Nick Rolovich and his staff, they're not going to show up to yeah. the game. Tyler right? Algier told me, you'll see the film room tonight on the Stocky Show, but he said some of the players told him after, whoa, this is pretty, that was pretty empty compared to what we'd had it. Yeah. So there was some kind of... I don't know, probably a political sort of thing going but, on. But there. you know what I did notice is that there was a giant group of BYU fans who were all vaccinated or had negative tests. Yes. <laughs> Down there in they the end were zone. There. They were having a pretty good time. Uh, I think that's the kind of game BYU needs to have this week. Uh, a game where they're running the football. The best way to keep Brennan Armstrong, this outstanding Virginia quarterback, Amazing. in check is have him on the sideline. So if BYU can put 17 play drives together and, and, and run and eat the clock, I think that's that advantage. A lower scoring game, I think, benefits BYU. A shootout, which Virginia is more than comfortable playing, um, seems to feature the quick strike offense that they have. So I was thinking about that today. And, uh, yeah, BYU, we thought that they should have rolled these guys the way they were running the football. But 7-7 seven, seven at halftime, at that point, you're just like, just get one more point. And get out of town. Yes. And uh, no one, I don't know if anyone remembers who, uh, who'd Alabama play? Who'd Georgia, they're number one. Who'd Georgia play the second week of the season? I'm doesn't fine. matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah, no. They doesn't won. matter. Yeah. They won, and, and now it's the big game is this week. It's the same thing for BYU. And, and it's like, hey, what was, how many yards did the defense give up uh, the fourth game of the year? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They what won. matters is Saturday, and if Virginia scores 49 points, all that really matters is that BYU scores 50. Do you feel like you mentioned a low scoring game? Do you feel like it can be a low scoring game? Can BYU hold this Virginia team under like 30? Well, when Arizona State came in, the thought was here's this great mobile quarterback. They lit up two bad teams coming in. Uh, are they going to light up BYU? And uh, in fact, all four of those 
Pac-12 teams, BYU is allowed 17.3 points. That's amazing. Well, that's the lowly Pac-12, David. Yeah, that is the lowly Pac-12. <laughs> but two of those teams were in the top 20 when they came in. Right, right. Uh, just, the, just the fact of being able to do that four times, um, I, I, I think it, it's quite capable. To, it's quite possible that they could do that. Um, could Virginia come out and turn it over four times like Arizona State or Utah turn it over twice? BYU's now back in the groove of taking care of the football, um, which has been their mantra through all their wins. So I think it's got to be that kind of a game. But if it isn't and it's 56 to 55 and, and, uh, and BYU wins, everyone can curse the defense on their drive home being 7-2. and two. I, And I want to see the BYU offense explode. We haven't yet to really right. see that, right? Especially in the Power 5 games. Those are different. They're harder. They're, they're tougher, right? BYU's gonna, I feel like BYU's got to score some points like they haven't yet this, this game. Yeah, meanwhile, Bronco and his boys of Virginia, I don't know what's going on with the quarterback situation there, but they had Kurt Ben Kurt, who was developed and now is still in NFL. the NFL. Yeah. Bryce Back Perkins, right. yep. developed, still in the NFL. And now they've got Brennan Armstrong. So Robert and I and Bronco Mendenhall, they're, John do- Beck. they're doing some. Jason Beck doing some things with the offense right. at, at Virginia. And Taysom Hill's a quarterback that they had that's in the NFL. Maybe there's something about those guys. It's, it's, we know it's they're not, awesome. It's yeah. not, a, not a bad run for yeah. sure. No, th- but this Armstrong guy is legit, and uh, he can run, he can throw, he does all those things. The mobile Kevin Federick, Dave. Yeah. Let's see who this guy is. But I, I look at that uh, Arizona State quarterback who was also mobile and could throw, and BYU took the, way, took the run away from him, tried to make him beat him with his arm, and he couldn't do it. Um, you know? This guy's going to be a long ways from home on Saturday night. It's going to be late. It's going to be a lot of emotion. Uh, he's really, really good. Beat some good teams. Made some mistakes. They've gotten fortunate against some teams. Miami some Louisville pressure. field goal misses that. Yeah. They, they got lucky. Yeah. Think about that Washington State game. Uh, and they had a decent quarterback. I expected DeLora to throw the ball much better than he did. Yeah. On a three-man rush due to the maligned front group with their health. But in the second half, on the few times they got just enough pressure on him, mm-hmm. he misfired. You know, they didn't have to sack him. I think they got one sack the whole game. But they got pressure on him at just the right times to where a pressure on a kid, you, you might be wide open. That doesn't mean I'm going to throw it to you because I'm, I'm fearful that I'm going to get hit. Uh, they got to get a little more pressure than they did there, but they got enough pressure to throw Delara just off his game a little bit where, uh, where he just uh, he wasn't himself and – and they had and some good receivers. Virginia's got absolutely. some even better receivers. They got some legit receivers. You know, they're a good team. And you know, it's I, I salute Bronco and his staff, and and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Uh, they left friends. They're coming back friends, uh, and, and they're very successful. And and BYU's BYU's better than when Bronco left. Virginia's better as Bronco brings them back in than when he got there. And I think it's just a win-win for everybody. And and I, I look forward to that a moment. For the crowd to acknowledge him and yep. then to go after his guys. Dave McCann is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Before you go, Dave, and I know we've talked all football, understandably, uh, and of course, Glenn Tuckett, but it's we're nearing the busiest time of the year. BYU basketball is about to ramp up. The BYU basketball blue and white game is this Friday. Like it, yeah, baby. I don't like, know how it sneaks up on us every year, but it does. But basketball season's right around the corner. It's like free night. They did the research, they said the best price that BYU fans like is free. So you can just come into the Marriott Center and watch the blue-white scrimmage. If you can't get there from around the world, we'll have it on BYU TV. And then we end up, and then we have Cleveland State, and then there's San Diego State. Uh, it's going to be a very fast and furious next couple of weeks. But that San Diego State game on BYU TV is going to be awesome. They are very good. And I think BYU's got, what, three, three teams right out of the gate, three or four out of the gate that went to the tournament last year. And there are, what, ten – Quad one potential victories on the schedule. They don't have to win all lot. ten. They don't have to win all ten. Creighton, How about three or four. Yeah. I know that one team is the, the three quad wins with Gonzaga being number one. But uh, we take one of those. Three just take right one. Now. Take one. <laughs> and uh, and get in the tournament. Have some fun. And it's. I think this is gonna be an interesting team. But Friday night at seven. Uh, come watch us, and we'll watch them. And and uh, and this is an international squad now. There's yes, going to be is. a lot of phonetic yes. spellings and pronunciations yes. <laughs> on our game notes. But it, it, it looks like a fun bunch, and we'll start that journey Friday night. Yeah, very likable crew. We learned that uh, again during BYU Basketball Media Day. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. We look forward to after further review. We're going to do 52 plays tonight. Let's We're go, break baby. down 52 plays tonight go. and get you ready for Saturday. Fantastic. Thanks, guys.